Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Amanda and I'm also known as Dr. Mommy Budgets. I am here today to do my week two budget projection for the month of December. Um, December today is December the 11th, 2020. So yeah, we are here to do that budget projection. Now, as it relates to a budget projection, I'm not sure if I've ever uh, described what actually takes place. I may have, because I've been doing this for a while, but in a budget projection, I typically do my budget layout on the day that I get paid, which is a Friday. I get paid um, my paycheck every Friday. So on Fridays, I sit down and I write out what I plan to do with that money for the upcoming week. So basically I am projecting from payday, which is the Friday, up until the following Thursday, what I plan to do with that paycheck. So that is what these budget projection videos are about. And it also kind of highlights um, how much I plan to pay toward my debt. The only two debts that I currently have left is my student loan, which is pretty huge, and my mortgage. So there you have it. Um, if you are interested in this sort of information and to just see how I do my budget and how I lay out my numbers and my unique technique, which it is very unique. I haven't seen anyone who's used this technique, but it works for me because I love color. I love looking at how the numbers actually relate to each other. And I just like seeing it down on paper in front of me so that, you know, I can add what I need to add, subtract what I need to subtract, and, you know, just to make sure that my budget flows. And like I said, I'm an old school person that loves pen and paper. So if you are interested in this sort of information, then I would love it if you would stick around for the remainder of this video. All right, everyone, as you can see, we're back and we have our tablet in front of us. Today, we are doing our budget projection, which is week two, December the 11th, 2020. And my tidbit of motivation for today is keep pushing, even when you don't feel like it. That's when you are able to um, determine those that are strong-willed and, you know, know exactly what life is about and what it has to offer. Because, yes, times are going to get tough. Times are going to get challenging. Times are going to get difficult, whatever you want to deem that word as. Um, but, yeah, that's that's where you're going to be able to determine the those that are you know, used to the grind and know what it takes to be productive from those that are not. So let's get into this video. Now I'm going to angle this tablet, of course, because I cannot write with it straight up and down. Let's get going. I'm going to try not to keep this video long, guys. I say that every single video and it still end up going long. But hey, it's a budget projection, so I have to make sure I include everything for the week. The first item that I will be projecting is my mortgage. Now, I am doing a refinance, and there's going to be one month, or I guess one, maybe two, that I'm probably going to skip once the refinance actually takes, in, takes place. But, yeah, for now, there's no skipping. So, mortgage, $291.34. Next, we're going to have... The security um, for this home, $25.91. Then we have Netflix. I saw on some of the YouTubers' channels where they had Netflix listed at $17.99, but currently mine is uh, still $15.99. Not sure what's going on there. Netflix is starting to get a bit pricey for me. Next, we have the auto insurance. Okay, guys, so what has happened is I normally set aside the 102 per week for auto insurance, but I have removed the vehicle. So now 
the new amount that I will need to set aside each week is going to be $85 a week. I, that That's a difference between the two numbers of $17. I'm leaning more toward adding that $72 to the total debt amount that I'm paying toward the uh, student loan at this time. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, as of now, it's uh, $85 per month. I mean, per week that I set aside. Now the student loan amount, um, the normal amount that I normally set aside is $96.75. So we will still do that. Then we have my daughter's car fund. And um, I normally send her or transfer $20.50 into her account. I may even round her number off um, based on this new amount I have in my auto insurance. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It doesn't really matter to me. The debt amount that I will be paying towards student loans is $323.77. See guys, we need to think about this. Look at all the money that I'm paying per week toward debts. Sometimes per week, I send 500 and some dollars a week to this student loan debt. Just think of what could be going on if I could keep this money in my pocket or invest it or I start buying some real estate, which are some of the things I am going to do. That's why I need to aggressively pay down this student loan real, real quick, like really quick so that I can start doing these things. But neither here nor there, that's definitely another uh, video for another day. Now, this is the children's lunch fund. Yes, they are still at home. They are virtually learning. But I am still going to set aside this money because one day they are going to return to campus. And that way I'll have a nice cushion or pad to start their lunch accounts off with. At this rate, I probably have like a year's worth for both uh, students that are still in high school. So we're setting aside $30 for that this week. Next, we have... Our household expenses, so that's things like grocery, gas, toiletries, pet supplies, eating out, blow money, whatever all the categories I have um, in my wallet, which is a cash, cash index system. And um, yeah, there is a video out there on how I do that. I think I'm going to do an updated video on my cash index system to kind of see where I want to go with that because those categories are starting to add up because I'm not utilizing a lot of them like the auto gas and things as much. So I need to figure out what I want to do with that and how I plan on utilizing it. I'm thinking what I might do, I might um, start doing some of these challenges, these money challenges that people are doing um, for the year and start putting some of that money in there. Children's savings accounts get $28.50 this week. And last but not least is my HOA fees where I will set aside $6.70. So that is all I have for this week. The total, actually that's enough, huh? The total for this week is going to be $1,135.46. That is what my expenses will um, come to for this week. Now, there are a couple of other things that I typically do. One is I normally have a cushion that I like to leave in this checking account as well. So I would need to add that to that total. So for now, let's see how I want to do this. Let's go on and do the subtracting. We may be able to do it all together. I normally leave $1,228 in this checking account per week. And so what is going to happen is I will subtract the total amount, which is $1,135, the total amount for the expenses, $1,135.46, from that overall amount of $12.28 that I leave um, in the account. And let me get my calculator out so I can do that. Let's find the calculator. So, $1,135.46 
it is 1228 minus 113546. That gives us a total of 92. And then I like to leave the cushion amount of $26.15 in the account. So we're going to take that $92.54 plus the $26.15. We're going to put in parentheses that that is the cushion amount. And what I mean by that, I like to leave a little overage in this account so that if something comes through, it's never, you know, left bone dry. So if we add that 92.54 plus the 26.15, we are at $118.69. Okay, now let's make sure I did that right. So we, we are left over with, oh, I did not do that right, guys. So basically, this is the amount that's left over after I pay my expenses. I needed to have subtracted the 26 from the rest of the leftover money. Okay, I guess I haven't had enough coffee. So what we're gonna do is scratch that line out real quick. And it's not like I haven't been doing this budget forever, but I guess some days your brain just goes blank. So let's Subtract. So let's try this again. 92.54 minus 26.15. That leaves me with 66.39. So as of right now, that would be the amount that we would put away in our bills savings account because it's an overage. We've taken care of all the expenses and left the cushion in the account. So that would be money that we would put away, technically. That's just here on paper, so follow me. After that, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna put a PA beside those items that we are not paying for this week. So basically, um, let's see what will not, what items will not be paid out this week that this is week two. So it would definitely be the auto insurance, the student loan. What else? What else? I think that may, oh, and the homeowners association fee. Everything else is a charge that will, oh, sorry, the lunch account. And everything else are items that will take place this week. So next we will put a pink circle around all of our put away items, okay? Then from there, let's move our markers over here so I can stop reaching across my tablet and into my frame. So now that's step number two. Step number three is to add all of those put away amounts together. So that PA, that PA total is going to be $301.84. So that will get a pink circle. And what I wanna do right now, let's grab my calculator again. We're going to double check that. Let's double check the PA amounts because actually it is going to be different because of the new auto. So let's go through that real quick. $85 plus $96.75 plus $30 plus the $670 for the HOA. So... Okay, so it shouldn't be that much of a difference. What happened? Oh, I think I know what happened. That's a put away amount and this is a put away amount. So we're gonna have to uh, end up adding those together. So this new total is 218.45. All right, so that's another put away amount, which we'll get, I love putting 
numbers that are related to each other in the same colors. That way you'll understand what's going on. So this is the two put away amounts. That is step three. The fourth step is to go back up through the expenses again and put a purple triangle by all items that I will be taking care of this week, which will actually just be the remainder of the items in the list. So, yeah. So they will all get a purple triangle and it's just a way for me to do a top level view once I am looking back over my budget to say, hey, these are the items that I paid out this week. These are the items that I didn't pay out this week. So as you can see, we have the mortgage on here. The mortgage is totaling $874 for the uh, month, but this is the week where I will pay the mortgage. As you can see, I only set aside $291.34. So that means we need to go find that money from somewhere, I mean, the rest of that money, which is money that I need to pull out of the bill's savings account. So we're gonna subtract the current amount that I am going to utilize from this week's paycheck, a 74 minus 291.34. And that leaves us with $582.66 that I need to um, pull out of the bill's savings account to help me satisfy that debt, right? So at this particular time, we will go back down here to the bottom of our page and as you can see we have a pull out amount and we have two put away amounts so let's go on to add the two put away amounts together and that way we can have one number for that category so the two 1845 plus the 66.39 all right that's going to give us a total of, let's see, 218.45 plus 66.39. So that total is 284.84. So that is our put away, okay? In the bill savings account. So that's what we got going on down here, all right? So next step we would have to do is subtract these two numbers. We have the put away, the pull out amount and the put away. So we're going to subtract the 582.66 that I need to help me pay the mortgage from the 284 that I'm supposed to put away for this week. So let's subtract those two 582.66 minus 284.84. That gives me a total of 29782. Okay? And this is the total amount because remember the, the larger number is the number that I need to pull out of the bill savings account. The smaller number is the amount I need to put away. So our answer always takes the action of the larger number. So basically, this is going to be the total amount that I need to pull out of my bill savings account to help with my debt for this week. Now, now that I'm thinking through this, what I did, the reason why the numbers are different from previous weeks is remember because of that $17. Now I did say that I was gonna utilize that $17 to add it to this debt amount, which is you know what I'm gonna be sending to the student loan for um, this upcoming week. But according to this calculation, I did not, which it doesn't matter, it's $17. So basically, what I'm showing is that I'm leaving that $17 in the bill's savings account because I'm pulling out less monies this week, which is fine. Since I wrote the, the budget out that way, that's what we'll do this week. So we're only gonna pull out um, 297 Okay, let's make sure, yeah, 297.82. Why does that look funny? I want to go through it. This video is getting lengthy. Um, it, it appears on paper that everything is correct, but yeah, we're going to make sure. 
So there you have it with this video. And also let's go back up here and do a real quick explanation. This student loan money here, yes, that is the amount that I normally send to them if I was just paying my monthly amount of $387 a month. But see, I'm doing these weekly lump sum payments to the student loan, so I'm not sending them that $96.75 yet. I'm going to bundle all these $96.75s up at the end of the year, and that's going to help me reach that goal of paying down that uh, $6,000. $484 by the end of the year. I'm currently at $4,800 that I need to pay toward my student loan by December 31st. So y'all make sure that y'all are motivating me and rooting me on because yes, that's going to be a hefty go. We're pretty much midway into December and I still need to pay $4,800 toward my student loans before the year end. So yeah, that's what we have for this video. Um, leave me a comment below and let me know um, what you think about my budget plan. Let me know if you're budgeting. Um, share this information with people that might be interested. Um, like this video and last but not least, please subscribe to my channel. What is it going to hurt? Nothing. It's just a click of a red button down there by the description bar. So this is all I have for now. This is Dr. Mommy Budgets, where we dream big but start small around here. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.